To start, we'll begin by talking about the University of Wisconsin policies and Wisconsin laws you need to be aware of when you take responsibility for the consumption of alcohol at your event. The policies we'll be talking about today apply to any RSO event where alcohol is present. An RSO event is defined as any activity, including all meetings, internal or other, regardless of the location on or off university property, coordinated by a registered student organization or its representatives to bring people together. RSO policy is applicable irrespective of location, including states and nations. At any RSO event with alcohol, organizations must ensure that guests are provided with both food and non-alcoholic beverages as an alternative option. If an event has individuals present that are under the minimum legal drinking age, then procedures must be put in place to prevent consumption of alcohol by these individuals. The minimum procedures that should be in place include, IDs must be checked for all attendees if underage guests are expected. If at a licensed venue, IDs must be checked at entry. If at a non-licensed venue, IDs must be checked at entry and immediately before providing individuals with alcohol. The reasoning for this is to combat giving out wristbands, such as giving a wristband to an underage friend at a house party. Alcohol is served in a designated and entry controlled area for attendees at or above the legal minimum drinking age, such as a beer tent or a beer garden. Finally, attendees must wear or display a wristband as a physical indicator of their age. At any event where alcohol is to be served, each sponsoring organization must provide a minimum of two sober monitors for up to the first 50 total attendees. One additional sober monitor from each sponsoring organization must be provided for every additional 25 attendees. For example, an event sponsored by one organization with 60 people would need three sober monitors. The requirements for sober monitors are as follows. The sober monitor shall refrain from the consumption of alcohol until the time that they have completed serving in their capacity as a sober monitor. At least half of the sober monitors must be an officer or executive position or have been an, a member of the organization for over a year. At least one sober monitor must be over the age of 21. All sober monitors must complete this online sober monitor training program and quiz prior to serving as a sober monitor. We'll now take a moment to look at a few examples of how to calculate the number of sober monitors that you'll need for an event. Once you're given the information for your event, take a moment to think to yourself about the number of total sober monitors that you'll need. For example, here we have an event for a single organization that has 25 individuals in attendance. How many sober monitors would be necessary? Take a moment to pause this video before revealing the answer on the next slide. For 25 attendees, you would need two sober monitors. At this event hosted by a single organization, we have 55 attendees. How many sober monitors have to be present? Go ahead and pause the video again as you jot down your answer. The correct answer here is three sober monitors, two for the first 50 and a third for attendance up to 74. At least one of them needs to be over the age of 21. Here is a bigger event. At this event hosted by a single organization, we have 76 attendees. How many sober monitors need to be present? Go ahead and pause the video again to jot down your answer. The correct answer here is four. You would need two for the first 50, three once you reach 75, and the fourth for attendance up to 99. At least two of them should be exec board members or members for at least a year, and at least one of them needs to be at least 21 years old. All right, this one's tricky. At this event hosted by a single organization, we have 49 attendees. How many sober monitors do we need? And here's a hint. When figuring out how many sober monitors you need, sober monitors should be considered attendees as well. Go ahead and pause the video again to jot down your answer. The correct answer here is actually three. Since sober monitors are considered attendees as well, there are technically 52 attendees at this event. You would need two sober monitors for the first 50 and the third for attendance up to 74. To meet the requirement that at least half of the present sober monitors are executive members, at least two of them must be an exec member or a member for the group for at least one year. 
Now that we've determined how many sober monitors that your event needs, let's take a moment to talk about your duties as a sober monitor. As a sober monitor, your duties are to be present at all times during which alcoholic beverages are served or consumed, to ensure that the registered student organization alcohol beverage policy is observed by all persons in attendance at the event, to ensure that intoxicated persons do not consume alcoholic beverages, to maintain control of alcohol beverages at all times to prevent unauthorized consumption and ensure alcohol beverages are properly secured at the conclusion of the event, and finally, to ensure that individuals below the minimum legal drinking age do not consume alcohol beverages. One of the top priorities of a sober monitor is that all guests at an event remain safe. As part of the university's amnesty through responsible action, in cases where individuals are incapacitated due to alcohol or other drugs, it's imperative that someone calls for medical assistance. In the interest of student safety, this program serves to remove or reduce punitive consequences faced by students in violation of non-academic misconduct. This protects both the caller and the person being called for. Any registered student organization event with alcohol held at a venue without an alcohol license must abide by the following additional policies. Alcohol beverages are limited to beer, fermented malt beverages, and wine. No hard alcohol or cocktails should be available or served. Additionally, beer should be served in individual cans or bottles. Common sources of alcohol, such as kegs, bowls, barrels, etc., are not permitted. In addition to the student organization alcohol policy, we recommend that groups follow these additional points to increase the safety of events with alcohol. Do not serve or allow consumption of alcohol at events where a majority of students are under the minimum legal drinking age. Do not consume alcohol at general or executive board meetings. Do not use alcohol as an incentive for participating in an event such as prizes and contests. Liability increases when alcohol is used as an enticement. Do not have activities where consumption of alcohol is the purpose, consequence, or reward. Drinking games and using alcohol as a reward leads to overconsumption because people drink when they win or lose and not when they want to. Do not use organizational funds to purchase alcohol or pull money from attendees to provide alcohol for the event. A BYOB policy for individuals over the legal drinking age is the best way to ensure appropriate alcohol consumption. Do not charge for alcohol or charge an admittance fee for an event where alcohol is provided. This is likely considered operating an unlicensed tavern and is a criminal offense. Do make sure all members can legally attend events at a liquor license establishment. By definition, a restaurant, which is less than 50% of sales are from alcohol, or a tavern, where more than 50% of the sales are from alcohol, which holds an 18 or over Center for Visual and Performing Arts license through the city of Madison. Do use a typed guest list, which includes the names of all anticipated attendees. It's recommended that this list specifically note membership in the organization and age of the attendee, as well as the date of the event. Do not allow anyone to enter the event unless they were on the guest list prior to the event. Do ensure that if not at a third party vendor, only sober monitors over the minimum legal drinking age serve as bartenders. Do set a specific start and end time for your event and do make sure that the food provided is unsalted. Salty foods encourage more alcohol consumption. While there are university policies for RSOs to follow at events with alcohol, there are also various state laws that limit alcohol sales and service. The age to pour or sell alcohol is 18. The age to consume alcohol is 21. The DUI and DWI blood alcohol content or BAC limit is 0.08. And then the DUI and DWI BAC limit under the age of 21 is 0 0.00. The consumption of alcohol by those under 21 is always prohibited, but there are also limits placed on those of age who consume alcohol and operate motor vehicles. Please make sure to monitor the status of guests at your event and prevent alcohol consumption by those who are intoxicated or becoming inebriated. Providing alcoholic beverages is a great responsibility. People who provide or allow the consumption of alcohol are subject to legal requirements as well as the legal liability they undertake when doing so. 
it's illegal to serve individuals who are underage. And further, there can be legal implications, not just for those who are doing the drinking. Your first offense can be up to $500. Your second one, up to $500 and or 30 days in jail. Your third offense, up to $1,000 and or 90 days in jail. And then your fourth, up to $10,000 with a fine and or nine months in jail. And then serving the visibly intoxicated can result in a $100 to $500 fine and 60 days in jail.